Black Lives Matter. Facts don't matter. <laughs> right now, the narrative that is being set is that the system is inherently racist, white privilege, yada, 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 and when cops see any young black man, they go into Lloyd Christmas mode. Lloyd! <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time, man. I swear Dumb and Dumber was by far, by far, definitely one of my top three favorite um, Jim Curry joints ever, ever. I know that's not why we're here, but I'm going to say it one more time, ever. To the point where places like Black Lives Matter, leftist websites, even MTV News are pushing this idea that innocent black men are being shot for no reason at all. Now, the purpose of this video is not to justify nor condemn any of the deaths that occur during these police civilian interactions, but to provide you with the context that MTV News and Vox and HuffPo refuses to. Ba, 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 facts don't matter. Let's just use this video from MTV News. That's is this video going, going to upset me, guys? Please tell me it's not going to upset me because I'm, I'm just now getting to know Steven Crowder. And I think he's absolutely two things. I think he's um, no three things. I think he's absolutely hilarious. I think he's intelligent as hell. And I think he's an asshole. Those are three things. All right. All right. So um, and other than the intelligent as hell, <laughs> he matches me, bro. He matches me. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Hopefully this doesn't upset me very much because I I haven't taken my meds. Being circ my meds are weed. You waited to start. Like marijuana. That's it. All right, the situation with Philando, we don't really know a whole bunch yet. That didn't stop MTV News from putting it in a video. And it seems to be a really horrific accident, and hopefully justice will be served when the information comes out. But we do know that he wasn't shot for broken taillights. He was shot during an altercation where he was pulled over because he matched a description for a suspect in an armed robbery. Police were on high alert for a gun. Police get shot in routine traffic stops all the time. Statistically, yeah, it happens a lot at the hands of young black men. And there was a miscommunication with Philando reaching for what he claims to be his wallet or ID and the cop thought was a gun. Now that doesn't mean that any of this is justified or it's a good situation, but to simplify it to shot for broken taillight is deliberately misleading. Clearly Alton Sterling wasn't shot for selling CDs. He was shot because someone called in a report that he was threatening a homeless man with a gun. He was tased first and he continued to resist arrest and he had a firearm on him, which I'm guessing was illegal because this guy had a rap sheet a mile long, including being a registered sex offender and having done time in prison for violent crimes. This wasn't a routine pat down. This was an altercation with a longtime felon who didn't want to go back to the slammer. Is it unfortunate? Wow. See, this is why I need not to ignore the news. The news just, oh man, it just upsets me. It makes me feel a certain type of way. I'm the type of person where I like to, I, I protect my peace. That's what I do. I protect my peace. And when I protect my peace, whenever there's something going on around the world that I believe would be the opposite of protecting my peace, I stays away from it. I let the rest of the world go ahead and fight that battle and, and hold up their signs and be pissed off and rah, 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 rah. I stay in my little bubble. Why? Because I'm not doing it to be um, 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 selfish. Yeah, I am. I'm doing it to be selfish because my number one priority is my family and I need to present them my best self every single chance I get. And if I'm bogged down with everything else that's going on around the world, then I... I'm not my best self and I can be, I can be some work. I can be some work. So, um, if that makes any sense, it probably doesn't probably sound like a cop out, but basically I'm saying is a lot of these cases that he's mentioning, um, I will speak on them if I knew a lot more about them. Yes. Was he arrested and shot for selling CDs? No, only Mr. Clark was not shot for attending a birthday party. He was shot for preventing paramedics for assisting with an assault victim. He wasn't handcuffed. He refused to show his hands. And there is DNA evidence showing that he reached for a cop's gun. He wasn't there to play balloon tricks. Almost forgot, little tidbits. Um, the assault victim that he was interfering with the police trying to help, it was his girlfriend. Yeah, he was the one who assaulted her. What a gem. But oh by all means, God. please continue with the narrative that cops are simply out there 
uh, hunting down young black men because they're attending birthday parties and selling CDs. I hate you. What they don't tell you is Walter Scott tried to grab an officer's stun gun, and he did run away from the police because he didn't want to pay child support. That being said, the cop acted poorly, but no justice, no peace. Wait, there's justice. He's being charged with murder. The system worked. Okay, Mike. Hold up. So the, so the police who shot that gentleman um, is actually being um, charged with, um, with murder. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, I like that. I like that. Okay. Wait, there's justice. He's being charged with murder. The system worked. Okay, Michael Brown was not shot for stolen cigarillos. What happened at that convenience store was a robbery, not shoplifting. There was use of violent force. He was identified as a suspect in that robbery. He reached for an officer's gun. But hands up, don't shoot. His hands weren't up. He was punching a cop in the face and reaching for his gun. When that happens, sometimes officers are trained to shoot. Are there several points where this didn't have to escalate? Of course, but the idea that a racist cop picked off some gentle giant Michael Brown is entirely inaccurate, as the rest of these examples. Sandra Bland traffic violation. To the untrained, uneducated eye, that looks terrible. She was murdered for a traffic violation? No, she was detained and she killed herself. A lot of people want to say it's a conspiracy. No. Third party autopsy results revealed that, were consistent with that, and there was marijuana in her system. No, I'm not saying that all people smoking joints should go kill themselves. Just, if you're watching this, go get a snack. Yeah, from what I understand on that one, no, the black, black community, um, black community ain't buying that. <coughs> that she killed herself. Because apparently she had a good life. Um, she, she was, um, she was like a... Um, she was standing up for, um, standing up against the, the the local government for things that were going on, and was trying to make things better for people who um, people who lived in, I believe, was it Baltimore? Was it Baltimore? Hopefully, I don't have the the place wrong, but um, but from what I understand, she was not like um, 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 what's the goddamn word I'm looking for? Sheesh. Crazy. I got brain farts all today, man. Oh, I'm not God. saying that all people smoking joints should go kill themselves. Just if you're watching this, go get a snack. Again, he wasn't killed because his car broke down. This was a horrible situation with a cop who, by the way, was fired after. It's important to note that he was fired for not doing his job well. He thought a car was abandoned. It was 3.15 a.m., dark outside. Uh, Mr. Jones was there and he did have a legal firearm, but you're a cop. You're looking into what you think is an abandoned car in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you're confronted with an armed subject. So the cop was fired and it seems rightfully so, but try and think about this situation. He didn't go into it shooting a guy because he was black. He probably went into it a little bit nervous in a bad area of town at a dark time of the night. And he had stories in the back of his head from all of his friends in the force who had died, who made a wrong decision, guy pulls out a gun, they're dead, and someone has to go explain to their wife and kids why daddy's never coming home again. Again, he was fired, but let's try and see this as more than car broke down, he was shot because he was black. Freddie Gray was not killed for carrying a switchblade. Okay, first off, he fled the police unprovoked. He saw the cops, they looked at him, boom, the kid bolted. And he happened to have a switchblade on him. Again, not justifying all of the actions, but half of the cops who arrested him were black and he was brought up on weapons charges in an area that is notorious for high crime. Freddie Gray had something like 20 criminal cases against him, five open at the time of arrest, by the way, when he was high as a kite on opioids and I think it was pot in his system. Now that matters because the argument is that he was killed in a rough ride in a cop car, by the way, with half the cops who were black, uh, and he died seven days later in a trauma ward. But the fact that there was a struggle and he was high as a kite can certainly lead to one being more likely to be injured, especially considering that a judge let the driver go. Does it mean that mistakes weren't made? No. Does it mean that... Hold on one second. I need to look at these right here. Arrested on weapons charge in high crime area. Fled police. Tested positive for opiates. Half of the cops were black. Died from spinal injuries. Seven days later. All right. Seven days later, he died from spinal injuries. In the... In the ward. In... What? In prison? That don't sound a little, a little different to y'all, bro. That sound a little different to me. I, I, I need to look into that one, man. This death was warranted. No, but he wasn't shot for having a switchblade. Sean Bell for leaving a bachelor party. Well, he was just enjoying his night. 
Except what actually happened is he left the club being patrolled by undercover cops. He made a run at the cops when they identified themselves openly as cops and the members of his entourage were known felons. Dang, most bachelor parties just have male firefighter strippers. Female, I mean female. Oscar Grant. I didn't finish Fruitvale Station because I found it incredibly boring. It appears that this is a case of a cop not doing his job well. For that, he was fired. So, um... Oh, give me this one, MTV News. Except Tamir Rice wasn't killed for a super soaker in the park. He was aiming a firearm replica with the orange tip removed at people in the park. His age was not determinable at the time, as you can see by this video. And officers weren't informed that the gun might have been fake. Is it a horrible, unfortunate situation? Yes, but they didn't... All this is sad, man. All this is sad. And this is a lot of... A lot of cases. This is a lot of cases. And, and I'm following. Um, all this is doing, to be honest with you guys, I don't follow a lot of these. I think if you were paying attention to what I was saying earlier, I, I probably wasn't very clear. But I don't follow all these um, situations purposefully. Um, and there's no excuse for ignorance. So that will that's probably the excuse I'm trying to learn. Um, I'm trying to use right now. But I just want to say this. Um, now is the time that I will go into this and figure out where I stand on these things because honestly this is the most I've <laughs> this is the most I've heard from all of these to be honest with you and um yeah all right let's continue say hey you know what would be fun today if we go kill a black kid for nerf Ramarley Graham Again, this is an even more complicated situation. The cops, a narc unit, followed him after they thought that they had spotted a gun uh, in his waistband, and they had some reason to believe that he had just participated in a drug deal. Well, it turns out they may have had some reason, because he ran from the cops when they identified themselves, and he tried to flush a bag of weed down a toilet. He ended up being shot when he didn't have his hands up, and allegedly he reached for something in his waistband. Now, the cops didn't have a warrant to be in his apartment, so guess what? I have a problem with those cops and they should be fired. Again, was this guy shot solely because he was black, or is this an example of a situation that escalated and requires context for people to understand? It definitely requires a lot of context because them being in this house shooting him anyway, and he got a, and him getting shot in his own apartment and they didn't have any type of warrant. That's wrong. I, at least I know that from watching TV and movies. That's wrong. No, he wasn't killed for walking around with a knife at all. He was a gang member, a currently active gang member. They found him after a report from a stabbing victim at large still holding the knife. He continued to hold the knife and refused to put down the knife even after being pepper sprayed and shot with a beanbag gun. And then he started walking toward the cops with the knife, as you can see in this video. So yes, they put 20 rounds in him. A lot of people don't know this knife. Knives are incredibly dangerous, much more dangerous than guns at distances less than 21 feet. We'll have the references up at ladderwithcrowder.com. People get hurt all the time. Officers get maimed all the time by knives. Now, um, I, if I saw that, I will argue why shoot him 20 times? Why not shoot him in the leg twice? Why does everybody, as soon as you hear the, the first round go off by your partner, that means we need to all let off rounds until he's no longer moving. Yeah, he's walking towards an officer. The, one of those guys should have shot him right in his leg because, honestly, they're trained for that, right? They're trained to be able to put somebody down without killing them, in my opinion. Isn't that correct? Like shooting somebody 20 times? Um, like, okay, he wouldn't fall to the beanbag, so... You know, we really got to we got to yell and shoot, 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 shoot until he no longer moves. Um, that seems a bit excessive to me. I, 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 I just for my periphery, that seems far too excessive for me. So in this situation, the officers have a decision to make. Eliminate the threat, who is a currently active gang member who may or may not have stabbed someone else who refuses to drop the knife and is coming toward you, or risk serious bodily harm by an active knife wielder in an attempt to be more politically correct. Instead, they opted to eliminate the threat so they could go home to their families. What choice would you make? See previous example, Katherine Johnson. Here's one that I agree with. Isn't that great that we can create a video that's actually truthful to encourage a dialogue of honest discussion to the best of my knowledge according to my research and not gay jared's research um the cops were acting unbelievably outside of the law they may have planted evidence it seems like there was some shady stuff going on with falsified reports but here's the beauty the cops went to prison as they should 
Would it have been better that a 92-year-old didn't get killed in a botched drug raid? Of course, but the cops are in prison. Uh, John Crawford III, this is the famous Walmart Beaver Creek guy with the toy BB gun. Do we have, do we have video on this? Yep. Okay, let's, well, let's bring that up. So some shoppers mistook it for a real gun. There are some reports that he refused to comply with officers, but look at this. This is nowhere near the hunting section, and he's using the gun to select his Fruit Loops. This is wildly erratic behavior. I think this is an unfortunate situation. He really shouldn't have been shot, and the cops should probably be punished. But he wasn't just shot because he picked up a BB gun at the Walmart toy section. They said, there's a black guy. Let's shoot him. We have an excuse. Kenneth Chamberlain, an example of cops being crappy. By the way, white people encounter crappy cops too. A medical device called the police to his home. It seems like he refused to open the door. He had a blood alcohol, uh, at which point he was legally drunk. And it's just a crappy situation all around. Seems like bad cops. Can we find some common ground? Can we have a truthful discussion here? Eric Garner, go back to my previous podcasts. I always maintain that the cops were unnecessarily rough with Eric Garner, but he was resisting arrests. He was big. They didn't kill him. The guy had a heart attack because he was so overweight. Still, the cops should be prosecuted. That cop that was raking his face into the sidewalk, I have a problem with him. That's an abuse of authority. Can we find some common ground or do you still have to lie about everyone else? India Beatty holding a fake gun. That's not what happened. It was 1.20 a.m. It was dark. Cops were investigating an unrelated case. They saw her getting into an argument with an unarmed person and she threatened him with the gun. She then refused to comply with police officers and was shot as a result. Unfortunate, yes. An example of clear-cut racism? No, of course not. Well, nude and erratic is a very vague term, but uh, the cop was black here, so... Yeah. Trayvon Martin for wearing a hoodie. Oh, thank you, Geraldo Rivera, for your misspeak, making this a meme for all time. No, he wasn't killed for wearing a hoodie. George Zimmerman, I've said it, he's a jackass, not a fan. He should have stood down. He didn't have to follow this kid. But when that situation escalates to the point where the kid is bashing your head into the concrete, here's the deal. Whenever you assault somebody that violently, you're forfeiting your right to live. People don't like to hear that, but here's the deal. If someone holds me at knife point or gun point or assaults me in the street or sucker punches me, you don't know what the intent is of that person. You don't know if they're simply trying to impress their friends or if it's some form of gang initiation or if they're a crazy person dead set on killing you. you Hold up. Um, from what I remember... On this case, um, didn't George Zimmerman follow him? He followed him, right? And he tried to he tried to approach him. That's the dumbest thing in the world. You deserve to get your dag on. You deserve to be beat up. Period. Ain't no such thing as self defense if you following me and you're you're causing this issue to happen, and I whoop your ass. Now is self defense? No, it's not. You you was following me, bro. Get the hell away from me. Get away from me. I did nothing wrong. Get the hell away from me. Don't follow me. Go somewhere. And then you come up to me like you you want to fight me and all this. You approach me trying to question me. Nah, go some daggone where. Nah, nah. This one right here, I completely disagree with. I completely disagree with this one. You don't know if they want your watch or they want your life. The second you escalate it to a point that is violent enough that could kill somebody, whether it's your intent or not, you forfeit your right to live. And that's what happened here. Tragic, yes. People need to mind their business unless they are um, they're going apps, um, actual um, law enforcement, period. That's it. Because this wouldn't have gone that way if this dude wasn't playing Batman that night and trying to dag on, trying to be a, um, trying to um, arrest a villain and he wasn't even um, 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 licensed to do so. Come on, bro. Go some dag on where. Mind your business. People get hurt all the time for minding other people's business. Nah, this, this whole thing shouldn't have even happened, man. But this is not out of the ordinary. Again, the point of this video is not to justify all the killings, nor is it to condemn all of the killings. I, I think if we're being honest, I've been fair and pretty reasonable. If you don't think so, let me know below. The point is that when it's Black Lives Matter or MTV News or HuffPo or whatever the organization is that day, when they put out there this idea that cops in record numbers are simply killing black people because of a level of melanin in their skin for benign activities and no reason at all, what does that do? Well, it makes it okay 
to vilify cops. It makes it okay to dehumanize cops, and it makes it okay to treat them subhumanely. Because think about this for a second. If you genuinely believe, as many of the cop killers out there right now do, that officers are killing people for simple things like selling CDs, for going to a birthday party, well, of course you could justify it as your duty to kill police officers. And people have. My point is that if you are not honest, if you are simply using a false narrative to try and generate clicks, you then allow somebody to aim their latest outrage cannon uh, at whoever subject you deem to be suitable. In this case, lately, unfortunately, it's been a lot of innocent police officers. Right before the Dallas shootings, if you watch this channel, I said, hey, 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 if it gets to the point where it's more controversial to say wait for the facts than it is to demand the public lynching of officers, we have a problem. That video was released right before the Dallas shootings. I am telling you this right now. If we do not start having an honest conversation about what is going on, you are going to create an atmosphere that you can't take back and you will regret. That's the only purpose to this video. Hope it's been of use to you. Next one will have more immature wiener jokes. All right, so I enjoyed that actually. And, um, and I, I have some homework to do now. I have some homework to do. And like he mentioned before, if you're still here watching the video, um, we should have an honest conversation about these things. Um, but it's also, it also comes down to who do you believe in? Because if people are, um it's, it's like what side do you believe um like all of these situations we can speak for or against them that's that's the whole point of having a defendant um i mean a, a defense attorney and um and a prosecution so you can find enough evidence or lack thereof to to um to stand um for either side but at the end of the day at least hear the sides don't just wash them out and be like, nah, that's not the case. Or just believe the very first thing. Oh, she got locked up and she was, and she committed suicide when she was, cause she got locked. She was so, she was so stressed out about life and, and, and she didn't, she felt like she looked so bad in front of her parents for having a record now and having weed in her system that she killed herself in her, in her cell. Come on. I'm not believing that, bro. I'm not believing that. Why would they lie? I don't know. People are ridiculous and people lie and people lied about less and people lied about more. People lie about less. People lie about more. Sometimes people protect certain, um, certain individuals so that they can keep their jobs. And sometimes it's not about the one person's job. Sometimes it's about the higher, higher ups, um, job. So the people that's lower on the totem pole, they have to be protected. I don't know what the case is. All of this could be conspiracy theories. But at the end of the day, if we're not um, communicating about it objectively, then and we're just taking the side and we're like, oh, that's stupid. It's dumb. It's, it's the writings on the wall. Nah, -uh. who did that writing? What wall was it written on? Like whose interest uh, does this best serve for the narrative to go this way or that way? Cause this is about narratives, right? Apparently black lives matter has been creating a narrative enough to make Steven Crowder cover this, um, cover this whole thing, like do a deep dive into it. I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Ben. And now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside the Patreon as well. You all have been amazing. Love y'all.